I refer to the motions filed by the Leader of the House on the 14th of September, precipitated by the motion filed by PSP NCMP Hazel Poir on the 7th of September, calling for the suspension of Mr. S. Iswaran. In my view, there are two key issues for Parliament to consider. First, whether it is fair and proper for a duly elected Member of Parliament to be suspended from responsibilities towards his or her constituents and legislative duties before due process is concluded. Second, what Parliament ought to do when a Member of Parliament has been effectively interdicted from MP duties arising from actions taken by his or her party leader? First, let me speak on the issue of fairness. The Honourable Member Ms. Hazel Poir's case is that a member should be suspended from Parliament because he has been arrested and is being investigated for the serious offence of corruption. However, the centrality of the rule of law in Singapore renders the Honourable Member's suggested course of action premature, a point made all the more stark because we do not even know the details of what Mr. S. S. Warren is accused of. Parliament should be mindful of the dictum of presumption of innocence. With respect, I would also request PSP colleagues in the House to consider the precedent their motion would create should a future government decide to fix opposition MPs by way of politically motivated investigations. So, in some cases, those who have been investigated under the Prevention of Corruption Act have not been charged. In a few other cases, accused persons who have been brought to trial have been acquitted, or the prosecution applies to withdraw the charges. In yet other cases, those convicted at first instance have seen their convictions overturned on appeal. Any of these scenarios could come to pass in Mr. Iswaran's case. In the Workers' Party's view, the wheels of justice must be, fully, must be allowed to fully turn before Parliament decides what to do. The Workers' Party cannot agree to the motion filed by the PSP. It would not just be unfair and premature, but significantly, this House would be seeking to overturn the electoral mandate given to Mr. Iswaran by the people through the ballot box by prematurely passing judgment on him. This leads me to the second issue on how to deal with an MP who has been put by his party leader on indeterminate leave of absence from Parliament with full MP's allowance. While it may not be appropriate to suspend Mr. Iswaran from Parliament, it may well be appropriate to suspend the payment of his MP's allowance. Workers' Party MP Dennis Tan raised this matter of Mr. Iswaran's MP allowance in Parliament last month. Mr. Speaker, there is disquiet amongst members of the public because he continues to collect his allowance. As far as I know, Mr. Iswaran is neither performing duties in his constituency nor in Parliament, and his likeness is not found on Town Council or People's Association banners in West Coast GRC. The Prime Minister said in this House last month that if Parliament wants to stop an MP's allowance, Parliament has to move to interdict the individual as an MP, and Parliament has not done that, and I quote, what has happened is that the MP has been on a leave of absence, and eventually when the case is settled one way or another, then consequences will follow, unquote. What needs to be noted, however, is that the Prime Minister's act of interdicting Mr. Iswaran as Minister appears to have effectively interdicted him as a Member of Parliament as well. For the Workers' Party to decide on whether to support the Leader's motions, there the Leader's motion, there are a few questions I would like to ask the Leader. In order that this House can understand the full extent of the restrictions on Mr. Iswaran as a Member of Parliament, my first question is, can the Leader confirm whether Mr. Iswaran's ban on entering government buildings extends to Parliament House? Does Mr. Iswaran have access to the Public Service Division's Member of Parliament appeal system? And is he rendering assistance or expected to do so to his residence in his capacity as a Member of Parliament. My second question addresses the Prime Minister's comment that consequences will follow. It is unclear if those, I quote, consequences, unquote, include a clawback of the MP allowance. I would advance that such a clawback for the period during which 
he has not performed MPs' duties would be a reasonable expectation of the public. So my second question is this. Can the leader tell us whether a clawback of Mr. S. Iswaran's MP allowance is within the PAP's contemplation in so far as Clause C of the leader's motion is concerned? For completeness, it is this issue that forms the basis of my parliamentary question today and filed on the 7th of September about the duration Mr. S. Is Mr. Iswaran is expected to be absent from Parliament. My third question concerns Paris C of the Leader's motion, where it says that this House will consider this matter when the outcome of ongoing investigations is known. This contrasts with what the Prime Minister said during the clarifications of the Prime Minister's ministerial statement on Mr. Ishwaran last month. The Prime Minister said, and I quote, if there is a case, the case has not been heard, he has not been, he has not been found guilty or acquitted or whatever, unquote. My third question is this. Can the leader clarify whether the word outcome in Paris C of the leader's motion means that this House will consider this matter once investigations are completed and a decision has been made on whether charges will be preferred against Mr. Ishwaran? Or if it means that this House will consider this matter only upon conclusion of the entire criminal justice process, including any possible appeal? The Workers' Party's position on the leader's motion will turn on the responses to these three specific queries.